Namaste and welcome to another episode of Yoga Vasishta. We're trying to go through this introductory section of Book 1 as quickly as possible, but there are really many profound points being raised by Rama in his confession of his depression. So I try to give them a little space, but really we're going to handle all these questions in depth in book two and book three and four and five and six. <laughs> Just wait. Uh, this is going to be a long series, very profound and magnificent in its scope because it basically ties the whole Vedic tradition together and relates it back to the Upanishadic tradition of Advaita. So this is going to be the crowning uh, achievement of my life's work, which gathers all the different threads and strings of inquiry I've done over the years. The vacant mind, O sage, is ever entrapped in its evil desires. It is never at rest with itself, but roams at large like a stray deer separated from its herd. The human mind, as light as the minutest particle, is like an unsteady wave. Therefore, it can have no rest in spite of its nature. Disturbed by its thoughts, the mind is tossed in all directions, like the waters of the milk-white ocean when churned by Mandara Mountain. I cannot curb my mind, resembling the vast ocean in its course, subject to huge surges of passions, with whirlpools of error, and beset by whales of delusion. So here Rama describes in very colorful language, using many similes, the state of the human mind. This is the typical human condition, that we are driven by our minds, huh? as if we had, you know, like the little angel and devil on each shoulder, always blabbering in our ears, telling us to do this, think that, say that, go there, blah, 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 blah never giving us a minute's peace. So the real benefit of a meditative life is the peace of the mind. Making the mind peaceful is, it seems impossible. It seems like a huge task, like trying to calm the waves of the ocean. Not very likely. <laughs> so it seems impossible. And why is it? Because we all really want peace of mind. But every time we make an effort to calm the mind, as soon as we relax, even the slightest little bit, up pop the thoughts again. That same monologue going on over and over, repeating the same nonsense, isn't it? But Ramana Maharshi reveals the actual secret to calming the mind. And that is Atma Vicharana. To inquire into what or who am I? What am I really? Because this thought of I is the root of the mind. And if that thought can be dug up and cut to pieces, then the whole mind will stop and will never grow back. And I want to tell you, this is the most effective method for calming the mind and reaching real peace. I am carried away, O sage, by the current of my heart, like a tree on the bank carried away by waters and waves beating upon it. I am led afar by my mind, like straw carried off by a hurricane, either to flutter in the air or fall upon the ground. My earthly mindedness has put a stop to my desire of crossing over the ocean of the world 
as an embankment stops the course of a stream. The baseness of my heart lifts me up and lets me down, like a log of wood tied to a rope and dragged in and out of a well. Now, this is the fate of everyone who is at the mercy of the mind. The waves of the mind are constantly going up and down like a roller coaster, huh? like a manic depressive <laughs> nightmare that just goes on and on without any end. And when does it stop? That's the thing we need to know. Huh? Because our attention gets caught up in this mind. Huh? You've seen people, or maybe you've even done it yourself, laying back on the couch and the television's blaring away and it's just taking their attention anywhere it wants, here and there. Huh? Look at this. Listen to that. Wow, buy this stuff, buy this other stuff. Going on and on without end. This is the mind. And we're like henpecked husbands being led around by the nose, by their wives, huh? their dominating wives. This mind is supposed to help us. It's supposed to be a tool, an instrument to help us survive in the world. But it just becomes a bother. It becomes like a chronic disease that never lets us go. How do we control this mind? Well, the process of Atma Vichara goes down to the root of the mind because every thought is based on I. The concept of I, the ego, the false self, is the basis of every single thought in the mind. Everything in the mind compares what we see, what we hear, what we feel with I, the notion of who I am, what I am. But if we examine this notion, we find that it's full of fallacies. Huh? It's full of falsehoods, wrong assumptions, unwarranted justifications and just plain lies. <laughs> Why? We think we need the ego to feel good about ourselves or to be strong. We think we need possessions and to uh, label things as mine in order to be happy or satisfied. But actually the reverse is true because all these things simply upset the mind with more and more waves. And then like a flood, it carries off our attention. And we don't think we can do anything about it because by now it has become a habit. So we're addicted to this mind. That's the only reason it can dominate us the way it does. We have to find out how to kick this habit and of course, the answer is Atma Vichara, self-inquiry. It is more difficult to subdue the mind than to drink the ocean or upset Sumeru Mountain. It is harder than the hardest thing. The mind is the cause of all exertions and the source of all that senses the three worlds. Its weakness weakens all worldliness and requires to be cured with care. Our pains and pleasures arise by the hundreds from the mind, like woods growing in groups upon a hill. But no sooner is the scythe of reason applied to them than they fall off one by one. I am ready to subdue my mind, my greatest enemy in this world, for the purpose of mastering all the virtues which the learned say depend upon it. To get virtues, we have to subdue the mind. Why? Because the mind is always pulling us toward the vices, isn't it? It's the mind that makes us think this and that and feel 
these different things and speak so many things and do so many things. The mind is in the advance. Huh? It's like the officers of an army saying, go here, do this, do that. And so we have become slaves to the mind. Now, wait a minute. Isn't the mind supposed to be our slave? Isn't the mind supposed to be our servant? Isn't it supposed to be a tool, a facility that helps us? Yes, it is. But what has happened is we become dependent on it. Just like a person becomes dependent on a drug or on a relationship. And so the mind has assumed the title of commander, the boss, and it's giving us orders instead of the other way around. That's what we have to overcome. We have to overcome this addiction, this dependence on the mind and see that we don't really benefit by thoughts. We benefit by being free from them. But since very few of us have that experience, we have no idea actually how wonderful it is. Some people pursue intoxication with alcohol or drugs to get just a little bit of freedom from the tyranny of the mind. But of course, it's only temporary. And then one builds up tolerance. And so the addiction becomes even more severe. Then one has an addiction to intoxication on top of the addiction to the mind. That's the wrong approach. Or one tries to distract oneself with sensations. Huh? But all sensations go through the mind. All the senses are rooted in the mind. So becoming addicted to sensations and other distractions simply strengthens the mind more. No, the only cure is Atma Vichara, self-inquiry, sitting down alone, quietly in a room and looking into what is this I? What is this self? What is consciousness, really? What is life? Looking into all these questions with the advice of the scriptures, or even better, a personal spiritual God who can answer your questions and help you overcome your doubts and find the real path. Because the pursuit of virtue, ultimate virtue being enlightenment and freedom from rebirth, depends upon conquering the mind. Otherwise, the mind will simply prepare another body for us to be born again in the future after this body is finished. So therefore, everything depends on conquering the mind. And the truth is we cannot conquer the mind if we attack it directly. We have to use a more sophisticated strategy. And that strategy will be given in the following episodes. So stay tuned. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinalgum Aruna Chalashivam Yidam